I'm on a quest to create an automatic farm for everything in Minecraft. Hello there, Ray here, and farming up ferns is not easy to do. Unlike most vegetation which can spawn up when you just bone mill the ground, when it comes to ferns, notice they don't actually appear even in taiga biomes when you do this. But you can find ferns naturally inside of jungles, taigas, snowy taigas, as well as old growth taiga. So you can use a shears on the naturally generated ferns in order to get them as an item. You can also find the large ferns here in the taiga, but when you use shears on them, they're not going to drop the tall fern item, but instead you'll get just two normal ferns. But you can have a 18% chance of actually finding the large fern item inside of a taiga village. This is the only way you can actually obtain it as an item in survival. You can also find the normal ferns here. But it's definitely not worth getting one of these ferns and placing it down as you can actually get this exact same thing just by placing down a small fern and then just bone milling it, turning it into a large one. So this is how we're going to farm them up. We're first going to place down the little fern, then we're going to bone mill it to a big one. Then we're going to break it down, turning one into two. Ferns can be used as a vegetational decoration and with bone mill you can get the big ones. You could also have a flower pot and place them in it. So to make our farm, we'll need to have the fern placed down. This can only be done on dirt like blocks. And once we have a bone mill and we shear it, notice that the items do fall downwards and we'll want to have them be collected automatically. So we're going to come in here with a chest and we're going to try to pick up any items using this hopper. But there's a problem. You can see that any items actually land on top of this dirt is not going to get picked up by the hopper. We can resolve this by placing down some farmland there by hoeing it. Now it's slightly shorter and I will pick up the items. But with the new 1.19 mud, it's actually much easier to do this. We don't have to worry about the farmland converting. Mud is actually considered a dirt-like block and it is also short so that any items that land on top will get automatically picked up. This saves us from having to put a hopper minecart inside of the dirt. Now we are ready for the next part of the farm. We don't want to be manually bone milling this as a player. We want to do this with automation. That's where we're going to have a dispenser point into where the lower fern is going to be. Now if we come into this dispenser, place in some bone mill and actually power this, you can see it automatically turns into a large one. But we don't want to be manually flicking this lever here. So let's go ahead and automate this part first. What we're going to do is have an observer clock here. So one observer that is pointing upwards into this dispenser here. Then we're going to come in and place a, another observer pointing downwards. This is going to create a clock that's constantly bone milling the fern in front, but it's not wasting bone mill. Now we can have an on and off switch for this clock. We just do that by having a piston like so, that's sticky, and a lever right here. Click that off. You can turn off the contraption. So as a player, we'll have to still break this down using shears, as if we break it just with pistons, we won't get the items. But we run into an issue. That is when we break down the large fern, not only does it break the top piece, but it also automatically breaks the lower one. So now we need to find a way to place in the small fern every time we harvest it. So since we can't automatically plant ferns, and we can't automatically break them and get the items, these two actions have to be done by the player. Luckily in Java Edition we have the offhand that works for any item. So we can put the ferns over there. Now when we right click it's going to place the fern and the machine is automatically going to bone mill it up. And if we hold the shears in our right hand we could also use the left click to break down those ferns into items. So we can switch between both of these and we can farm up ferns. But this is still not AFK because you have to be manually pushing these two buttons on your mouse. So let's use the trick that I showed where you hold both right click and left click to both plant and harvest. So if we do this, you can see it first works, but then all of a sudden the player starts breaking the mud which is underneath. So we need to place the fern up against something that we won't break very fast. So if we place up against the suspenser, we're less likely to break it down. Now we can't click up against the suspenser because we'll just look inside of it. So let's go ahead and place a sturdy stone block over here. You can see that we end up slowly breaking the stone, but we will eventually break it. We need to make sure we don't accidentally destroy our farm. Another reason why both left click and right click work in the beginning, but then eventually it just ends up the right click kind of dominating because as soon as you point at something, it either has to decide to use the right click button or the left click one. And every four game ticks, it will attempt to try one of them. So by looking away and then looking back at the block, we could then have the game choose a different mouse button, which will sometimes cause it to use the right mouse button once again. And this is the same trick I used in my seagrass farm. But how are we going to make the player move back and forth without actually being here? Because we're trying to make a AFK farm and the last thing we want to do is actually move our cursor back and forth. 
We could just move this block out of the way so every once in a while we pull the block out of the way using a piston and then player would be just be aiming out at nothing and then push it back in to have it switch up the mouse buttons. We could also do this with a trap door or we could even have a piston that moves the player up and down so we're not constantly looking at this block. But each of those methods takes redstone. Let's see if we can actually do this without using it by moving the player with bubble columns. So if we just place down a soul sand block down here and if we make a little teeny water source right beside it, we could come in and have bubble columns. So when the player stands inside them, he'll be bouncing up and down, all without having to use any redstone. So now if you hold right click and left click, you can see that we can have the system automatically reset so we can continue farming. Don't forget to give me credit if you use any of my farms, as that is the only way I get recognition. You guys might notice that there is still a hiccup going on. Sometimes we're just planting the fern without giving it time to actually grow to a large one. This is because I'm constantly actually aiming at this lower block here. As soon as I plant it in, I could accidentally break it before it grows into a big one. Now this is where we have to use the hitbox sizes. Notice that when we plant in a little fern, the hitbox is smaller than the actual lower block down below. But when we come in and it gets bone meal, all of a sudden it becomes wider. Now it's the exact same width as the block below. So if we came in here and aimed right here, we planted in a fern. Notice that if we would try to break it, we're not actually breaking the fern because the hitbox is over here. But once it grows up, now we're inside the hitbox. If we go ahead and break it, we would automatically harvest it without having to worry about prematurely harvesting the little one. So if we hop back here in our bubble columns, we are kind of moving all over the place. Sometimes we're aiming at the little one, sometimes we're aiming at the block, and sometimes we're aiming at the air beyond. So what we need to do is we need to make it so the player is not moving so much. So we're gonna come in and place a block just over top like this. So now if we stand between the water and the glass block, our head will bounce off of it and we won't move so sporadically. Now you can see we're easily able to aim just at the stone and the air beyond it. And since we're using the mud block, which is actually smaller than a normal block, if we do F3 and B, we can see that the player is still touching the water, which wouldn't work if we were standing on a coal block like this glass over here. Now if we go ahead and turn it on, we can see that we're able to place and harvest very easily. But now we run into another difficulty. That is items are falling all about this place. So let's come in and place in some blocks so that items don't fly out. On this side where we have the water, we can't just completely block it off. Otherwise the player won't be able to actually bob in it. But we can come in with something that is slightly smaller so that the player has a little bit of themselves touching the water and they'll actually bob in it. We also can't just place a block on this side, otherwise we won't have that air which we need to reset the player's clicking. So instead we'll try to block the majority of this up just by putting a chest in there. We can still aim right through this little hole right over here. Let's also place another chest on top of this one and that way we pretty much block off any area for the items to fly about and they should all end up on top of this mud which will get picked up and placed into the chest over there. But now we have something else to deal with. That is how do we actually get inside the farm? So on this side, we can actually come in and place in a slab there and remove those two blocks. Then stand with our back towards where we want the door to be placed. And if we click, the door is going to be placed just so. So it will block it just like that. Now the next hurdle we have to overcome is this dispenser can only hold so much bone mill. So if we want to automatically refill, we need to place in some hoppers. So if you want to, you can place a hopper on this side as well as on this side. And then you can use these chests over here to actually be part of the system, which is going to fill it up with bone mill. And this is where you can place in the bone mill that comes from any of your different farms. If you want to see all the different types of farms that can produce tons of this, check out this playlist here. I would recommend using my moss block farm. And then we could just finish up by placing the lever just over here to turn the farm on and off. We're almost there, so make sure to leave a like and hit the subscribe button. Now let's go ahead and give it a go. We just stand in this corner over here and we aim kind of at the top of the stone over here. And we hold right click and left click. And we can slightly move our cursor around to get ideal location, which is having it so the player is mostly aiming at the stone and then just barely aiming above the stone. But you can see we got some trouble here. That is actually the player shears will eventually break. Now a normal set of shears will have 238 durability. So for every fern that you break, you're gonna lose one durability. You could add unbreaking onto this, which will make it last four times as long, as well as mending enchantment, which you could use to repair it. But it could be a bit risky because if you AFK a bit too long, you could still end up breaking your shears. Alternatively, you can just use some iron to make several pairs of shears and switch between them when needed. 
Now it's not easy to automatically give the player a new pair of shears because the ferns that the player collects will then just fill up the slot where the shears are supposed to go into. Now if you want to do get the sweet spot for planting and breaking, you can get as much as 10,000 ferns per hour, which will also cost you 10,000 bone mill. Check out how I'm designing a farm for everything in this playlist here or in the document link below. Or check out this one on all the ways to get tons of bone mill. And we're getting ever closer to 400,000 subscribers. And thanks to each of you who've hit the subscribe button, as I can see who is subscribed and who isn't in my comments. Thanks for leaving a like and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!